Thank you, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. I've been coming to a lot of these events. First time speaking. So um, I'm Idan Cohen, I'm CEO and co-founder of Grow. And um, this is where I started my career in hardware. So uh, when I was 18, I was recruited to a special unit in the Israeli Defense Forces that was uh, building reconnaissance satellites. Uh, it was the first time that they decided to actually move from 50-year-old ex-NASA engineers to 18-year-old um, uh, talented, maybe knew how to code, but not necessarily uh, didn't know anything about hardware, actual software, or satellites, but they put us through like about a year of rigorous um, uh, schooling and eventually we built this this thing that could take uh, photos from space at about uh, uh, two feet resolution, which was kind of amazing. Uh, after that, I left the army and worked on some uh, communication and uh, uh, telecommunication uh, companies and eventually started um, Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, eventually started Boxy, um, uh, which was a hardware startup in 2007. So it was kind of when the hardware company's renaissance just started again, I think, after uh, the dot-com boom. Um, for the first time, it was a little more uh, uh, available to develop like hardware and distribute it again. Um, we had this idea of building a, a media streamer, and we built the Boxy Box, which was came out at about the same time that Roku and Apple TV came out. Um, we sold over $100 million uh, in products. Uh, we were in all of the biggest retailers, uh, put out two or kind of two and a half uh, versions of our hardware, and sold the company to Samsung in 2013. Um, and after selling the company, I started focusing a little bit more on my uh, hobbies, and this was one of them. So I had this apartment in the uh, East Village that had a roof space, and I was really interested in uh, cooking and, and, and fresh food and, and good ingredients, so I started growing my own. And from the first year that I had like five planters um, with, with some uh, tomatoes growing out of them, I ended up with this about 120 square feet of garden um, in my East Village roof, and with this that would come out of it. So every year we'd have about 200 pounds of produce, and almost every other night we'd have friends come over and enjoy a dinner on the roof. And then the other thing that happened was this. Tomatoes. Okay, okay. Um, so this is my daughter, and we've started spending time on the roof uh, every day. Beans? Okay. When I would come back, from work, uh, she would be waiting for us to go up and it would be like our special hour. And as you can see, as a two-year-old, she really knows how to identify her plants. Um, I like green lettuce. When we walk around the street, it's really funny because uh, if she sees like a planter with some plants, she'd come to people and, can I have some of your fennel? Which uh, very few kids actually do. Um, but it also made me think that there's really something there. Like, if you think about it, we're the first generation in almost 10,000 years that grew up without um, growing our own food. Uh, our grandparents still did it out of some necessity because grocery stores were just not that ubiquitous. Um, our parents were the first, like, real middle class. They could afford to have uh, lawns and rose shrubs because it was kind of the, the French model of an, uh, you know, an aristocracy. Um, and then we grew up into that. And, you know, we, we just didn't have access to growing our own food. But I think that there's a renewed interest in it. But if you look at the market, this is what it still looks like. Um, you go to Home Depot, you need to figure out like, what you're going to get, fill up your, the back of your car if you have one, um, f building a, a raised beds, um, uh, choosing soil, seeds, tools, a lot of hard work. And that's where the idea for Grow Duo came. Um, so we view ourselves as a, a smart gardening uh, company and really trying to create products that connect people to growing their own food in a new way. Um, this is so this is the 
This is the product that we just released two weeks ago. Sharing a meal together is something we all do. But the idea of gardening and growing our own And we'll food, cut out of it in one second. Many of us don't even consider it. We live in big cities. We don't have the space. And often, we don't have the time. Introducing Grow Duo. This intelligent planter makes growing food dirt simple. The Grow Duo recommends what to grow based on your unique environment. I'll skip right in. So the idea was how can we solve three main things that we viewed as an issue with growing your own food? First of all, where to start. So getting all of the supplies, figuring out what's the right soil, what's the right planter, um, how to water it, the knowledge of knowing what you can grow and how to grow it and when to plant it, and finally, um, getting all of the consumables, what we call, so seeds, seedlings, fertilizer, um, in a very uh, confusing market. So we send everything in one package, that's just, you can have your garden up and running in 10 minutes. You get it with actual soil, um, with seeds, with a connection to your faucet, with batteries. Um, you can connect them together, so you can have more than one. Um, we, we'd recommend as many as you want, but um, you can grow more varieties. And we figured out that there's no reason that you need to go into some weird Googled sites to figure out, to learn what you can grow. Um, so we built our own smart layer at the back on our server that gathers information from sensors that we have in the planter. So we have sensors for moisture, humidity, temperature in the soil, temperature in the air, and light. So we can actually help you make better decisions. We take all of that, we sync it to your phone whenever you're outdoors, uh, upload it to our server with uh, historical weather data, with weather predictions, with plant, with a plant database that we built that has 4,000 plants, we can help you make better decisions. So on your phone, when you open it, after you, uh, you set up your planter, we can tell you exactly what you can grow right now or what you can plant in the next few weeks. You can choose out of these varieties and order them through us. You will get a plant kit. Think of it as like a blue apron for, for gardening. Um, and then we guide you through the process of setting it up and, as you can see, also giving you weekly tasks if there's something to do in the garden. Um, and we teach you how to go through it. Um, this is a, kind of a little bit of the process, putting uh, soil, connecting your faucet. We've even developed our own solutions to making it easy to actually plant. So we're working with a company that makes these seed sheets for us. It actually has the right amount of seeds for every different plant that you might want to grow. And, all you need to do is just lay it on the soil um, and it will grow perfectly. Um, for things like, for plants that require uh, a seedling, we actually um, send you a live plant that you can just put into the ground. And of course, um, we take care of watering, which is uh, most people kill their plants because they either overwater them or underwater them. So we make that optimal. Um, so that was a little bit about Grow, and just to, to maybe give you a little more color about the company, we're currently about um, six people. We raised uh, just over $2 million. Uh, we're here in Alphabet City, and um, we just released our product two weeks ago. Uh, we, we, choose, we chose to, to, to take a slightly different path, um, and it's interesting because kind of being speaking after a few other people, then. We've, a lot of the uh, topics have been covered, but I think that actually it's gonna be interesting because I'm just gonna reiterate and, and have some new things. Um, so for instance, um, Alexei was, was speaking about uh, crowdfunding, and so we definitely decided that we're gonna be raising money and getting into manufacturing before we launch the product. Um, and one of the reasons was that developing hardware is actually really hard. Uh, in a team of six people, if you'd be building software, you'd have almost everyone understanding each other's code and working on similar things. In a team of hardware uh, engineers and software, for that matter, because you still need that, we almost have one of each. So there's very little overlap and very little actual synergy um, inside of the company. Uh, and one of the common misconceptions is that you can build a prototype and that with that you can go out to the market, validate that there's customers that would want it and go out to manufacturing. 
your prototype is going to be very different than your actual production uh, product. Uh, the cycles for developing hardware are much longer. So um, if in, in software, it's weeks. Uh, for us, it's months. And if you think about versions, it takes years. And, and when, we, when we created Boxy, in almost six years of the company, we created two products. Uh, it takes a very long time, and it's very hard for small companies to keep uh, churning out new products into the market. Um, distribution is complicated. So crowdfunding, if you look at it today, crowdfunding is just its an avenue for pre-sale. But it's also really dangerous, because pre-sale can be if, if you've done too well, and we've seen many products that, that went that route um, and raised millions and ten, tens of millions of dollars in pre-sale, end up really having a hard time um, putting out the product, satisfying their customers, um, and that can be dangerous. Uh, in today's world, direct is something that did not really exist, if you think about it, 10 years ago. Crowdfunding definitely opened it up for uh, customers to buy hardware products directly online, but that also has a ceiling, and eventually you need to be distributed in, through channels. In our case, for instance, and if you look at the gardening market, consumer gardening in the US, about 55% of it just, is just at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, it's Home Depot's highest grossing aisle. It's about a quarter of the revenue comes from gardening. So the market is still very skewed into physical spaces. So when we think about how we build the company, eventually we'll have to be there. But in order to be in physical locations, it requires a totally different financing for the company. It requires uh, managing your inventory and fulfillment in a different way. And so we believe that we need to take it slower and um, start with direct and slowly grow into it, which was something, for instance, that at Boxy, at those days, we did much quicker. Um, and retail is hard. Uh, retail requires totally different, uh, uh, sometimes pricing, and different uh, requirements from the company. And so that's going to that's gonna wait probably a year or two in the future for us. Um, and then when it comes to pricing, and I think that that was mentioned here as well, uh, at the end of the day, for consumer hardware companies, you need to be somewhere around 4x or 5x at the cost of your product. And what many people think is like, oh, I, I, you know, we've made a bomb cost, and this is what it costs to make this, and so we can price it about 4x that. But there's a lot of, of things that add up to your bomb that are not, not just components, electrical components or plastics. Um, and if you think about it, retailers take somewhere between 30 to 50%, and that's before promotions, training to their associates, returns, um, all of those things add up. And so one of the key things that were clear to us is that in order to build a sustainable consumer hardware business, we need to have some kind of a recurring revenue um, in our case, that's through selling um, consumables, so seeds, seedlings, plant kits. Um, especially if you think about replacement cycles, we're, for consumer hardware, we're at a very specific point where um, there's very few products that you actually need to buy a new one uh, often. So our phones, we probably replace them every two years. Our TVs, we replace them every seven to, to 10 years. That's a great example. If you think about it, a TV costs about $1,000, maybe $2,000. How much does it cost to make it? What, are, what is the actual margin on it? How much does it cost for the company to acquire you as a customer? And then you go and buy a new one in seven years from now. They've lost you completely as a brand. They've lost you completely as a customer. Um, so if you're building products that people are not going to have to rebuy often, you need to figure out, A, a recurring revenue, and B, which was another thing that we found unique in what we're doing, is a, is a business where people can actually buy several of your products. So at the moment, you can buy four of these of our Grow Duos and connect them together. In the future, we'll have more products that you can add to your garden. All of those things make it so that we actually have a relationship with our customer on the longer term through uh, the fact that you have an app in your hand that um, we can stay in touch with you, we can upsell you through uh, your lifetime with us, and that makes it into what we hopeful, 
hope for, hope for is a more viable business. And that's the other thing that you need to remember, that unlike software, customers are not exactly users. Um, and I think that when Alexi was talking about like, you know, the failures like, for companies like Juicero um, uh, or Jawbone, uh, in the hardware world, the reason I think that a lot of those just get so much attention is that it's much more painful. When a company that may have raised even hundreds of millions of dollars ends up closing down or selling, it, and it's an app that was on your phone, then you delete it from your, from your home screen. It's painful for a second, but you, you don't think about it. When it's an actual product that you've bought and put into your home, and now it's pretty much defunct, or you know that it's never gonna get updated, people are really pissed about it. And that's why, in some cases, the best customers can really make you as a product, but they can also really break you. We saw that at Boxy. When we started, we built a product that had very uh, avid early adopter community. Um, but that community quickly became too demanding even for our business. And if you look at it today, Roku that started a company that chose to go a path that, you know, I always said, like, you might end up buying Boxy for yourself or for your friend, but you're gonna buy a Roku for your parents or your grandparents. And I think that sometimes it's actually important to go that route. Um, maybe skip the early adopters, but skip to, but go directly into, with a simpler product that, that uh, is going after real consumers that are not looking for just like grand technology, but into a service that solves the problem. Uh, that's about it. Um, we're also hiring, so definitely talk to me if this space is something that you're excited about. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. I forget, is, is the product out or is it? The product be? is going to be out in January. So okay. um, we just entered uh, manufacturing. So that was part of the timing. We, we started pre-sale when we knew exactly what, our, what the product cost is going to be, what our timeline is going to look like. And so we hope that we're giving people a accurate timeline when we're selling it now in pre-sale. Very good. Where are you manufacturing? In China? China. Okay. We tried very hard to make it in the US or some composition of US manufacturing and eventually it was too hard and expensive. Yep. Great. Uh, no questions? How much are you going to retail on the planter for? Um, so it's currently selling for $199. One ninety nine. It's about. It's just over two feet wide. Um, it can t grow two large plants, um, and w you can. We have like as you buy them, as you buy more, you can get better pricing. It's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, she she was saying that one ninety nine is a is an expensive price. It's true, and we definitely want to get it down with time. Um, that was another decision that we've made. I don't think that, a couple of things. First of all, I think it's a perceived, uh, it's, it, there's a perceived perception of, of expensive here. If you went and bought your own planter and soil and installed a in drip irrigation system with some timer, you'd, you wouldn't end up much further away from what we're selling it for. So that's one thing. Um, eventually, we lower the, those prices, uh, but at, at this point, we want to go after people that are interested in in the product, but are willing to pay the price. I think that it will take time. There's a question there. So, I mean, how do you cope with the fact that in a sense, since you're like a Christmas tree, you know, it's a very seasonal product. And the other question is, it's highly segmented. This is really an urban grow technology because those of us in suburbia have backyards. It's very true. So, um, regarding seasonality, we looked at that when we started a company. About 50% of the U.S. lives in areas, and really it's like divided about 50-50. About 50% of the population lives in areas where the season is closer to f five to eight months a year, and, about, and the other 50% lives in places where you can grow all year round. 
Uh, so if you, if you look at like most of West Coast, South, Florida, um, all of that you can grow all year round. And so it's definitely seasonal, but if you think about, you know, take TVs as an example, 50% of TVs sell in October, November, December. That's also seasonal. Um, so that doesn't worry us that much. I think that there's enough market uh, through the year that we'll be okay with that. Um, it makes it a little harder building recurring revenue um, uh, services. So one of the things, one of the common questions that comes up is like, why is it not a subscription for the plants? And I think that that makes it complicated. If we had a subscription where you can't use it for six months, I'm not sure how we can build that uh, as a product. Definitely if we have one customer that can use it and one customer that can't use it. And your other question regarding suburbia. Um, I think that you're right, but I think that also um, there's a different type of customer that we're just now seeing. Uh, if you think about millennials and slightly younger people, they are now moving into the first, their first homes in suburbia, in their first single family home. Uh, growing your own vegetables is always harder than growing other plants. If you plant petunias and they die after a month, you can go and get a different type of flower in the, in the nursery. If you plant tomatoes and they die after a month, you're not gonna be able to do tomatoes this year. So it requires a little more help, and that's where we believe that, that, that that's the kind of customer that we can, we can go after. And we're definitely not a product for existing gardeners. Um, one of the things we saw, there, were, there was a few companies that came out a few years ago um, with sensors for gardens, um, and also some irrigation products. All of those went after existing gardeners. Um, no one ever went to the store, bought a sensor, and said to himself, oh, now I'm gonna start a garden. If you had a raised bed, you might have bought a sensor. So from, from the beginning, we knew that we're going after new customers that maybe have done it before. If you look at the top three reasons that people end up, the people that want to, go, to grow food don't, don't do that, it's because they don't have time, they don't have knowledge, or they tried in the past and failed. I think that all of those things we cover here where if you had to build it yourself in your backyard, it wouldn't be as simple. Great, this was terrific on this note. Thank you very much, really thank appreciate you. it.